It's more sophisticated, yet less complicated. It's more powerful, yet less cumbersome. It can store vast amounts of yesterday, or tell you what's in store for tomorrow. It can draw a picture, or it can draw conclusions. It's a personal computer from Apple, and it's as easy to use as this. Macintosh, the computer for the rest of us. If you have used a computer in the last 15 years, you probably have used a graphical user interface. A graphical user interface is one of the main aspects of a computer that simplifies the process for the user. The aspects of a graphical user interface includes icons, windows, mouse, and desktop metaphor. A graphical user interface is also referred to as a GUI or GUI interface. Before the great invention of the graphical user interface, people used a command line interface. A command line interface was quite intimidating to use for the average Joe, so to speak. DOS, Disk Operating System, was one of Microsoft's earlier operating systems, which used a command line interface. With this invention of the graphical user interface, it made computers more attractive to the average consumer. The first step towards a graphical user interface goes back to 1969 with the invention of the mouse by Douglas Engelbert, XY indicator he called it. Ten years later in 1979, Xerox developed the Xerox PARC Alto. It wasn't a commercial product yet 2,000 units were made. Xerox later developed another computer, the Xerox Star. This time it was a commercial product, costing about $16,000 per machine. But you had to buy at least two machines and a name server, plus a printer. So the price was $50,000 to $100,000 for one installation. Here's an actual demonstration of the Xerox Star from 1984. Let's roll the clip. We introduce you to the Xerox 8010 Star Information System. This is a new computer designed for office professionals. It consists of a processor, a large display screen, a keyboard, and a pointing device called the mouse. Stars are normally connected together by the Ethernet local area network. This not only allows stars to communicate with one another, but it also lets them share resources such as file storage and printers. The mouse has a ball on the bottom that rotates as the mouse slides across a flat surface. This moves a cursor on the screen in corresponding motions. It has two buttons on top that can be sensed under program control. You can use these buttons to specify objects and destinations for commands. The display screen shows your working environment. We call this the desktop. It is an electronic analog for an office. On the screens are small pictures, or icons, representing familiar office objects. This turned black because I pointed to it with the mouse and clicked the mouse button. We call this selecting the object. Selected objects highlight in reverse video. You can then operate on the selection with the delete, copy, move keys, and other As keys. you can see, the Xerox Star is probably very similar to what you have on your computer today. The Xerox Star failed commercially, but they led the way for today's computer industry. Xerox Labs also developed the Ethernet cable, which is the foundation for today's internet. Apple visited Xerox. Let's see what Mr. Jobs has to say about that visit. And they showed me really uh, three things. But I was so blinded by the first one that I didn't even really see the other two. I was so blinded by the first thing they showed me, which was the graphical user interface. I thought it was the best thing I'd ever seen in my life. And within, you know, 10 minutes, it was obvious to me that all computers would work like Xerox that. lost interest in the graphical user interface due to its commercial fails. Consequently, people left Xerox to work for other companies like Apple and Microsoft. Apple was developing a computer, the Apple Lisa. Lisa is actually Steve Child's name. The Lisa computer would have a very similar graphical user interface of that of the Xerox Star. Microsoft helped create programs for the Apple Lisa. In return, Apple licensed out the use of icons in Windows for version 1 of Windows only. Microsoft fulfilled this promise. The Apple Lisa was released January 1983. 
It cost $10,000 and had a 5 megahertz processor and 1 megabyte of RAM. Wow. Let's check and it to out. To the right of me is the most in innovative thing of Lisa, the mouse. The mouse is a pointing device. What the mouse really is, it's an upside down trackball. There's a small ball on the bottom of the mouse and when we roll the mouse on the table it moves a pointer on the screen and that arrow is my pointer that's attached to the mouse now what we're looking at here is my desktop that Lisa is simulating okay these small pictures on the screen are called icons they're things that I can identify with by looking at them I have for example a picture of a, a clock and a calculator and a garbage pail and some documents afterwards Microsoft released Windows 1.0 on November 20th, 1985. Let's take a look. How much do you think this advanced operating environment is worth? Wait just one minute before you answer. Watch as Windows integrates Lotus 123 with Miami Vice. Now we can take this Ferrari and paste it right into Windows Write. Now how much do you think Microsoft Windows is worth? Don't answer. Wait until you see Windows Write and Windows Paint and to listen to what else you get at no extra charge. The MS-DOS executive, an appointment calendar, a card file, a notepad, a clock, a control panel, a terminal, a principal, a RAM driver, and can you believe it? Reversi! That's right! All these features in Reversi, all for just... How much did you guess? Five hundred? A thousand? Even more? No, it's just ninety-nine dollars! That's right! It's ninety-nine dollars! It's an incredible value, but it's true! It's Windows from Microsoft! Order today! And then Microsoft released Windows 2.0 in November 1987, two years later. When Apple saw that Microsoft released Windows 2.0, they were furious! Take a look. This is actually from a movie, Pirates of Silicon Valley. Bill Gates from Microsoft is the one with the glass, and Steve Jobs from Apple is the one screaming at him. There may be some similarities, Steve. Similarities. Similarities. <laughs> Try theft. Steve, all cars have steering wheels, but no one tries to claim that the steering wheel was their invention. You and I are both like guys that had this rich neighbor, Xerox, but I got there first. I got the loot, Steve! Apple later went to Supreme Court with this matter against Microsoft. Microsoft responded in Supreme Court that it wasn't identical, only similar, and within every function was different. The court later ruled in favor of Microsoft. December 14, 1989, Xerox sued Apple for more than $150 million in royalties and damages. Xerox did license their graphical user interface, sadly they acted too late. Six years too late. Six years after the release of the Apple Lisa. The case was dismissed. Xerox is a very important company in computer history. In Xerox's Palo Alto Research Center, PARC, Xerox created two very important technologies, the graphical user interface and the Ethernet cable, the foundation for today's internet. If the court ruled differently, a single company would be in charge of the graphical user interface. Xerox also had a lot of patents, averaging two a day. What Steve Jobs had to say about Xerox. They were copier heads that just had no clue about uh, a computer or what it could do. And so they, they just grabbed, uh, grabbed defeat from the greatest victory in the computer industry. Xerox could have owned the entire computer industry today. Um, could have been, you know, a company ten times its size. Without a graphical user interface, there wouldn't be as many people on the computer. With the court's ruling, it helped Microsoft become the company it is today and took away Apple's control of the graphical user interface. Xerox would have been the Microsoft of today, but they didn't take immediate action. Now there are no restrictions on creating an operating system with a graphical user interface. Nowadays, most electronics have a graphical user interface. Computers, iPods, phones, tablets, and cameras, just to name a few. I hope you enjoyed learning about the greatest fail in computer history. Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. And we have, you know, always been shameless about stealing great ideas. You know what they say in the Mafia? Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. <laughs>